Hello everyone, welcome to this lecture. In today's scenario, we are going to convert a row data into a columnar data. This is just the reverse what we did in the previous session where we are converting a columnar data into a row data. So, I am displaying here is an input file. So, if you see this is the out input and the output should appear something like this. Here if you see, on the basis of this particular key that is 10, 10, 10, I am transposing all these col uh, rows into particular columns. That is 1, 2, 3, here is A, B, C. That is 3 more columns are added. And in a similar manner, for this 20, that is the next set of ID, we are going to convert these rows into column like D, E, F. You have to keep in mind that the number of columns are to be fixed. They cannot be dynamic in these type of scenarios because you are going to hard code the total number of columns into your expression. So in any scenario you should have a fixed number of the occurrences in the ID. That is maybe here you have three IDs, uh, two IDs and three different values which result into three different columns. So you have to keep this in mind when this type of scenario appears. So let's quickly move to the mapping and create one. In this, we have a source which is having an employee ID and an address. For the sake, these correspond to the input. Let's remove this for a while and save this. So, employee ID is this numeral and this is the address. Let's close this and let's have our target. In the target, we have the employee ID that is the, the ID on which we are going to find the columns, corresponding columns and these are the three columns. So first of all, we need a sorter to sort the data in a meaningful order on the basis of the ID. So let's use a sorter here. We will add the values here and sort on the basis of this ID. Sorting helps us because you need to understand that all the operations are happening at this employee ID. That is, the data should come in a manner that the, all the IDs, the similar IDs, they come up together. They should not be scattered along the whole file. So, by sorting we help all the data come along the corresponding employee IDs. Now, from the rows, we will be creating the columns by the help of an expression. How? That I am going to explain you. So, let me open the input file again. So now, if you see the data is now sorted, this is the output, you can imagine this is the output of the sorted transformation. So for this employee ID 10, I need output something like this. All the rows should be transposed into columns. So I will compare these values, the first value, the first row with the second row and the third row. When there is a change in this row, that is the change in the employee ID, I will move to the next row in the target. So you remember this? How we are going to approach? We will be using a counter to track the change in the employee ID. How? Let's see. I will create a counter here. Let this counter be a number, integer in this case and 
also we need to store the previous employee id let this be string now if you go here and if you see if the employee id equals to the previous employee id then we have to proceed with the operation of the transpose okay then we will increase the counter else if there is a change in the employee id we want the fresh operation to start from one that is the beginning this is also going to be a variable we will be assigning the employee id so till this we have decided and compared the like we have compared the previous employee id and the new employee id and if there is a change in employee id we have raised or incre increased the counter by one now what will happen if we increase the counter okay now we have to find this thing a b and c so a and b and c correspond to you can say column 1 column 2 and column 3 there are three columns right so let's quickly create three columns i will call it as column 1 and i'll give the output if counter equals to 1 that is this is the first occurrence right if counter equals to 1 then it's going to be the address or the this value the second column okay we are we are using it as address so this one else null similarly if you go to column number 2 if counter equals to 2 this is the second column okay then it will be address else null okay let's delete this oh i did my mistake let's delete this this will be much easier if you copy and paste and paste again this is going to be much simpler so we have three columns we will just change the counter values now you can see depending on the value returned from the counter we have extracted the three columns based on the value of the counter okay now when we arrive with this so the data will be not in this manner exactly but it should appear something like this let me quickly copy and paste to demonstrate you guys the data will appear something like this something like this so you see for the first row we have the second column that is uh, second co second column is null and third column is null for second row the first column is null we got the value of this column 2 that is b and then we got the third column as null and so on till now we got three entries for one particular id now we have to combine them into one id okay so in this case we are going to do the aggregation that is we will use an aggregated transform and get one single output by merging all these three how let's see
we will take all these outputs from the expression for a column 1 we will take the output and let's do the calculation here in the expression it will be a maximum of this column if you un try to understand this whole column that is the column 1 is empty for 10 right so if you select max it is going to take the one that is only one value it doesn't matter if you take maximum or minimum because it has to eventually select any of these values like from column 1 a column 2 b and column 3 c so just for the sake of this demo we are using max you can also use min now we will create one more column in a similar manner this will be maximum of column 2 and in a similar manner it will be maximum of column 3 So now we have all these columns. The value is now something like 10a, comma b, comma c. That is the aggregation is done, and we will have to utilize these columns into the target table. So I'm pretty much done with this aggregator, and we will drag these columns into target. So this employee ID. The aggregation is done on this employee ID and let's draw these columns here. Okay. Let's quickly save this. It's valid. Let's create the workflow. It's done. Let's disconnect. Open. And we see we have row to column. This is what the name we have given. Okay. Let's check the settings. I will give the name as input.txt. That's our input file for the target. Let's give it as output dot txt. Let's save this and run this. It succeeded. Let's go and check the output. Let's see if I have made the changes in the input. Oh, it's good that the input was the same. We didn't manipulate it. Let's go and check the output. Okay. If you closely see, we got the transpose that is from rows to column, but we only see we did it for the last employee id that is the last id def we didn't get it for 10 that is 10 comma a b c now this is something of a debugging sort of thing you have to realize what mistake you made in the mapping now with this error we also come across a strange property of the aggregate transformation that we will look into aggregator if you don't select any port as a group by it always returns 
the last row of the calculation or the aggregation. Remember, if you don't select anything in the group by, it will always return the last row. So, here you see in the mapping, we missed to check this employee ID. Now, we will check this employee ID. We will do the aggregation on employee ID. Refresh this. And let's run it again. Now let's open and see the file. See, the output has come. When we use the aggregation on the group by port by employee ID, we got the both the ro uh, rows here for employee ID 10 and 20. So this is a very important feature of aggregated transformation that we came across in this scenario. So this is the way how we convert the row data into a columnar data that is a transpose here without using a normalizer or any other particular transformation with just the help of expressions and an aggregator. If you have any doubt or concerns, please do comment and let me know. Till then, happy learning.